Hello everybody, welcome back to Silent Hunter 4. We're aboard the USS S-38 on her first war patrol just off the coast of the Philippines on uh, December 11th, 1941. We ended our last episode breaking contact from a large convoy heading off to the northwest. That was at about 8.30 at night. So here we are in episode 2. Only an hour has passed. I just started to do some time compression to continue the patrol and uh, it's only around 9.30 at night now, and we've just spotted, uh, or the lookouts have just spotted, some more enemy ships. So that's the situation now. It's still the same night, and we're going to go up and take a look at, uh, at what is nearby. Okay, up on the bridge here, and let's take a look. Enemy ship directly out ahead, bearing 001, crossing, uh, looks like left to right. This looks like our ocean liner from the same fleet. Is this the same fleet? Passenger liner. If they're going left to right, that means they're heading uh, north, northwest, and they've got escorts. We're spotting them. I think this is the same convoy that we have been fighting all night. I think they've swung back around into us. Let's set a uh, sort of parallel course. Looks like we've got two closer ships here and the modern passenger liner is out a little bit further definitely heading north so I don't know what the deal is because like I said it's only been an hour it's actually been less than an hour we're here at 2124 and we were peeling away from those ships last time at about 830 or like 835 something like that so I doubt that this fleet could have made it all the way down into the Lingayan Gulf and landed troops and are coming back. So I wonder if they've been spooked by us or other subs. This looks like a sub chaser. Escort. We've got several of them. They're all heading in the same direction too. Yeah, this whole fleet, assuming it's the same one, and I don't know why it wouldn't be, because what are the odds of seeing a big old passenger liner troop ship like this? I mean, I know the Japanese are making landings on the island, but I think this is... I think these are the same ships. They were heading southwest. I think they've spun around and are now heading northwest. So I think we're going to get another crack at this target. I'm going to try like hell. Now, because we only just surfaced not too long ago, we are still charging batteries, so I'm going to turn that off. Yes, sir. Standard propulsion. So we're back on standard propulsion, so we're just going to go with whatever is in the batteries if we have to dive, but I would rather make use of both screws at the moment. Uh, unlike later fleet boats, on the S-boats you have the U-boat arrangement where while you're charging, you're only on one screw because the other one is uh, disengaged while the motor is, or while the engine is spinning a generator. More ships being spotted out to the left. Possibly escorts. There's another uh, freighter. Maybe a modern composite. Yeah, it looks like we got three big boys out to the west. And this passenger liner is right in the middle. And that's the one that I want to grab because... We messed up that approach last time. But you can see we've got a screen of escorts that are closer are between us. So we'll keep an eye on them. Now the good thing is, last time, part of the reason we were spotted was because we were, um, what would that be, up moon of them. Even though there's no moon in the sky, there was some sort of reflection on the waves. Well, we're on the other side of that now, so we should be in complete darkness. Although I am again at flank speed. We're doing 12 knots already, so it is possible that the bow wake is going to be big and white. But I sort of don't care at this point. I mean, I do care. I don't want to get sunk, but... <laughs> Oh shit, and speak of the devil, we got rounds coming in <laughs> from our 11 o'clock. Yes, sir. Look at that, splashes just off to the left. Dive, dive. Down we go. God damn it, those bastards saw us. 
It's definitely the same fleet. Whew, I just heard that go right by. Their lookouts are on high alert, and they spotted us this far out. I mean, we're further away than when they spotted us last time. Okay, let's clear the bridge so no one gets hurt. Current deck, four, zero. And I'm just staying on the power for now. We're staying at flank speed because I want to close that distance. Electric motors just came online and we are going down, down, down. So we're actually going to hit that uh, uh, hydrothermic layer at some point here around 160 feet. And if we go down under that, we can make all the noise we want because those escorts were clearly not able to track us last time. There's 100 feet already. And we'll mark right for 180 to make sure we're underneath that layer. There it is. Okay, we're under the thermal layer. So actually, let's level out right underneath it. And those escorts, even if they're listening now, they're going to be getting back false information on what our location is. And I'm just going to keep blazing in towards those targets. Max speed submerged in the S-boat is 9 knots, and that's what we're doing right now. So this is as fast as she's going to go. No new messages other than uh, that contact report. Our own hydrophones only picking up three escorts at the moment. Three blue lines nearby, but we're also making a ton of racket ourselves, so... Nearest contact is Warship, closing at 288, long range. I mean, you can see we're not even picking up the merchantmen, and we know that they are just right out there, so let's pop back up and take a look. And grab a couple extra feet up on the surface there so that the periscope isn't bobbing in and out of waves, because that is annoying. Eighty-three percent battery power, so plenty to work with if we have to stay submerged for an extended time. Let's go ahead and rack everybody back out for general quarters. These poor bastards just got in to go to sleep. And then we turn around and wake them right back up. Main deck is clear. We have seven torpedoes remaining, so more than enough to do a lot of damage. If we can sink two, maybe even three ships, that would be ideal. I think we could do it. Okay, we're up at periscope depth. Raise the attack scope. Oh, 
there's some smoke on the horizon. Uh, what is? I think that's an escort, way out in the distance. Yeah, there is nobody nearby. I mean, this is uh, this is out to our our right already. That's all the way around. So that's 360 degrees. There's barely anybody visible. I mean, there's something out there. I think that's one of the large uh, freighters. Another composite freighter. In fact, let's lock onto him. Let's ID him. Best to ID all of our targets now, so when the shooting starts, like we saw last time, things can get really hectic. Better to know what you're... What you're looking at. Is that a large composite? Mm. I can barely see, but it looks like four masts, so let's call him that. Draft to 27 and a half feet. Oh, there's our liner. Okay. And, uh, she has been unidentified for some reason. That happens occasionally, so let's re-ID her. Um, oh, this is a large old passenger carrier. She's got two slanted funnels, and I think I mislabeled her. Because that's definitely what she is. Um, so I actually had the wrong uh, passenger liner selected before. So here we're looking at a depth of 28 feet. So we'll call up 20 for the torpedo depth. So that'll give us the five foot buffer. And in fact, for tubes three and four, let's let's go nice and shallow with 15. So we got uh, 20 feet on tubes one and two, 15 feet on tubes three and four. Besides the unknown fudge factor of the five feet, uh, the Mark 10 torpedoes sometimes did have a tendency to run deep, so they would actually run five feet deeper than you set them. So you have to take that into account as well. It's not every time, but if you do get a deep runner, it'll go right under the damn keel, and you'll never know it. So yeah, we have a range of 3,500 yards max range, and uh, she is currently out at over 9,000. So, we got to close down to a third of this distance, and that's going to be tough to do if we stay submerged. So, at some point, thinking we're going to do, we're going to blast up to the surface and do a high-speed run to try to close that gap. What are we down to now? Still at 9,100 yards. Estimated speed is 8 knots at uh, 347 degrees. There we go. So that lines up. I'd agree with that. Bearing two, eight, nine. Long range. Right there you can see on the um, on the bearing marker there on the TDC we've we've made that match. Downscope. Okay, based on the fact that none of the escorts are particularly close, I'm going to go ahead and raise the yes, sub sir. up to the surface now. We're going to make a surface run high speed for as long as we can surface, surface, until we come under surface. fire or we get into much closer range on that target. There we go. We're breaching now. Decks are clear, we're up on the bridge. There's the enemy out to our left, almost uh, directly at our 9 o'clock, in fact. Hearing 285, that sub chaser. Somebody fired at us, but nobody actually moved out to our position to investigate, which is interesting. Either they're afraid to leave uh, the merchant ships. 
or they just want to get out of the area. Oh, now wait a minute. What's this guy doing? Is he turning towards us? God damn. He's definitely turning to starboard, putting the nose towards us. Is that just random? Yes, sir. Guard or speed. is that mean we've been spotted? Let's drop the speed down and uh, cut down on that bow wake a little bit. Although, if he spotted us, it may be too late. We'll see. We'll see what his, uh, what his actions are now. see that reflection there on the water. No moon to uh, to speak of. Alright, this guy's coming back around to port. Still coming in our general direction, though. She has seen us, she's not firing yet. Yes, sir. Guard speed. No. Setting a course due north. That'll take us uh, what looks like parallel with yes, the course sir. of Hard the convoy here, the general Hard course of the convoy. Yes, I think maybe the escorts are just weaving back and forth because she's still parallel with us and uh, no artillery firing just yet. We're down to four knots in this turn. Let's add a little bit of oomph to that to keep our speed yes, up. Sir. Ahead, fly. Again, I feel like I'm running the danger of uh, going too slow, having them basically run into us in the dark and then they'll spot us. Oh, you know what? Here, let's re-report this contact back to headquarters. We'll give them an update on that, especially if it is the same uh, convoy, which I'm convinced it is. We'll give HQ an update since they are now taking a uh, completely reversed course up to the northwest. Escort is falling astern of us, which is good. Wow, look at this. We've spotted uh, so much more of the fleet. So here we go. Here's our estimated... Uh, base course of the convoy. Let's slow yes, it down sir. to cruise speed, nine and a half knots. Yes, sir. Current speed. He's very much behind us now, so that's good. We've got a very narrow profile, so hopefully they can't see us. Here is our primary target. Let's take some more calculations on her. She's down to 7,300 yards. It looks like she is right parallel with us. What does the navigator say? Estimated uh, speed of 9, bearing or um, heading 13 degrees. So just to the right of north, which is incidentally what we're doing. We're at like 25 degrees, so we're a little bit wider, or we're widening the gap a little bit there, but. Communicate back in from headquarters. Roger your contact report. Maneuver into position and engage if you have the fuel and weapons. And we do, at least for the moment. And we really can see the ring of escorts. So we're really, we're going to have to uh, dive underneath them 
Or maybe yes, sir. speed into position for an extreme long range yes, shot. We'll have to decide that in the moment. What looks best. There's that sub chaser turning back towards us, but again, doesn't seem to have eyes on us. We're down to seven knots to cut down on the bow wake, but that's already slower than the convoy is moving. So we're not going to be able to maintain this speed one way or another. makes me wonder what that escort saw a few minutes ago when they shot at us because we're now even closer to the ships than we were at the time and uh, they seem to be oblivious to us. Spoke too soon. Okay, yes, we've got rounds incoming. <laughs> Crash dive. Get back under. Dive, dive. Rounds coming right over the, the bridge. The ones that are high and go over us, I'm not worried about. It's the ones that hit the water, because they could potentially do damage to the hull under the water line if they hit us. Let's get rid of the... Uh, damage control crew, we don't need them in the way at the moment. Down we go, so we've been spotted. Yes, they sir. have a, uh, a point of last contact. One, seven, eight, Hopefully, a bunch dive, of the ships are going to come boiling out here to investigate, drawing them away from the main ships. Down we go, underneath the, uh, the temperature gradient, to hide yes, from them. Flank speed, and I'm going to cut in towards that convoy, maximizing our speed, closing the distance as much as we can. With any luck, going right underneath the escorts. Current depth, eight, zero. Past 100 feet Current now. Depth, one, zero, zero. Just 60 to go. Oh, look at the boots on this guy. What, are you wearing your slippers? I mean, I know we just racked you out, but... Uh, oh, those sort of look normal. Uh, those must be some sort of sound dampening things that go over the boots. Bearing two, six, zero, long range. Those escorts are looking for us. We've successfully piqued their interest enough. There's 150 feet. Passing thermal layer. There we go, we're through the layer. One, six, zero. Into some relative safety. Staying on the throttle as we come around trying to close that distance on the passenger liner. Here's the nearest contact, slow screws. She's doing slow speed scanning with the searchlight looking for us and uh, listening on those hydrophones. But both active and passive sonar should now be giving them confusing results. Okay, our sound man now is picking up 
the gray lines of the large ships. And this middle one here should be our uh, passenger liner that I want. There's one, two, three that we can see. Actually, maybe that middle one. So maybe it's actually this one. She definitely had one ship in front of her, a large merchant. And uh, I don't see a gray, another gray up to the north. So let's put an approximate mark here where I think that ocean liner is. Some sort of uh, a thick group of escorts down to the south. I wonder if they are specifically breaking off to look for me. Perhaps. Here's one out to our back quarter here. Bearing 208. Closest is actually 271. Oh, so out to our left. That's actually our closest contact at the moment. We've got a warship coming in at our 9 o'clock. Sonar has heard another merchant. That's actually the fourth one out to our left. Let's make an ever so slight turn to port. I want to start turning in to eventually get perpendicular with their track for torpedo shots, but I also don't want to lose excessive speed at the moment. There's a thousand yard target circle. Again, that's my preferred distance for a torpedo shot, but we can go out to 3,500 yards if we, <laughs> if we have to. Light screws closing bearing 204 medium range. So now it's that one to our back left quarter. Now she's getting closer. Somebody is pinging us, or is that two? Is that two sonars? Warship, constant distance, bearing three, four, There's our nearest contact, they're crossing. So, now that sounds like one person is is uh, pinging us directly. Five degrees left rudder. Let's get into a wide turn once again, coming around to the west. Warship now at 347, so just out in front of us, slightly to our left. Crossing still. No one is approaching yet. There we go. Closing, bearing 200. Medium range. And that is our nearest sound contact. The time is now 2208. So it's been half an hour, plus a few minutes since we spotted them. Batteries down to 53%. And we're definitely gobbling up a lot of that at flank speed. But I need to close the distance. I'm more worried about that. We just got to get close enough to crank off some torpedoes, and then we can go down to one-third and stay there for hours. So I'm willing to eat up some battery life in the meantime.
Report contact. Nearest is still bearing 200 medium range and closing. And it is this uh, sub chaser still looking for us. She's using a combination of the spotlight and sonar, which makes it clear that they don't know where we are. They know we're here somewhere, but they can't get a good fix on us, which is good. Let's move this circle a little bit closer up to the north here. Again, 3,500 yards is our maximum range for these uh, Mark 10 torpedoes, and we're already within that. Like, we're probably at about 3,000 yards at this point, so uh, we could actually fire some torpedoes at any time here. That same escort now at 201, Three, still closing, two, but not fast. Here is the approximate position of the line that I think is the ocean liner. Oh, we just got an updated bearing from the sound guy. So she'll be entering that thousand yard circle in just a few moments. And we're closing at flank speed as fast as I can. Down at seven knots for some reason. Yes, sir. We're in a very slight turn. I didn't. I don't think that five degrees of rudder will drop two knots off the speed, but maybe it does. Now opening at zero. Oh, zero two one. Okay, that's a different ship. Yes, sir. Periscope deck. So it looks like we've outrun that escort that was behind us at 200 and now we've got a different escort out to our front right and we're straightening out the rudder and we're coming up to periscope depth to take a look around let's see what the situation with the escorts is and with the merchantmen take another TDC bearing and uh, sort of evaluate our odds of shooting from this far out Thermal layer. Okay, we're back up over the layer so we don't have its protection anymore. If they're still listening, if they still have their ears on, they're gonna pick us up a lot easier now. Bearing two, five, six, long Warship out at 256, that's out to our left. Out that away. And we just got a call for battery power at 50%. So we've used uh, like 33%, right? I think we started at 83% or 88%, something like that. So we've used a significant chunk, but still plenty left for some high speed maneuvering here. Okay, so let's see, where is this old girl? There she is. Out at 330. So looking pretty good. So right out there. Let's take a new reading on her distance. Touching the water line right to the top of her highest mast. Estimating 2100 yards. And uh, she's, I will say, 70 degrees. Navigator estimates. Eight knots at three five seven, which I don't Bearing think is two, nine, four, 
Yes, sir. I don't think that's exactly right. Yeah, she's... There, she's more right there at 90 degrees. Let's take a, another bearing. They were coming down on 2,000 yards, and I actually feel pretty decent about that for a long-range shot. So let's prep those torpedoes. Do one final check on my depths. It is the correct ship this time. She is zigzagging. Zigging away from us, but as soon as she zags back towards us, she'll be heading back towards that 90 degree uh, perpendicular relative bearing. And that's when I plan to fire. Navigator still estimating 8 knots, so let's just call it 8. I don't quite agree with his... Uh, with his direction assessment, but actually might be pretty close if that's their their mean bearing after zigging back and forth. We'll cover our bases by doing a spread. Three torpedoes. I do one to the left, one right on center of the estimated track, and one to the right, usually two degrees and at this distance, two degrees will have a pretty wide spread. Okay, there's the ship behind her. It looks like some sort of tanker. That might be a good target to try to light up as well. There's that escort back behind us, bearing 140. Not particularly close. Yeah, this guy's looking nice and juicy. Let's uh, let's ID exactly what this is. A uh, large German? Is that a German tanker? No, it's not. They got different rigging. Oh, that looks more like it. Yeah. Large, modern tanker. It's got the bridge up front, the stack out back, and the various cranes. Those all match up. Taking another bearing. Let's just call it 90 degrees. We're just going to keep telling it that. And navigator still estimating 8 knots, so we're going to stick with that. Let's set uh, 2 degrees... Uh, three degrees? No, let's go two degrees to the right. So even if they speed up, they'll drive right into it. If they slow down, they've got two other torpedoes that'll be coming in behind, which will hit instead. So we should get two hits, hopefully, out of the three torpedoes, assuming there's no malfunctions. Let's take one more bearing. Down to 1,500 yards now. I think this is as good as it's going to get. She's turning back towards us. Firing one. Firing one. Torpedoes away, recalibrating for three. Torpedo in the water. Let's put it right on the center line. Firing tube three is away. And then two degrees left for tube two. Two, two. Three torpedoes opening tube four, and we'll recalibrate on this here tanker. Three is just out of the tube now. Quick estimate on this tanker, that looks pretty good. One final bearing. Fire four. Okay, all four fish are out, heading straight and true. Let's back off the speed. We have no torpedoes left at the moment, so no point in uh, rushing out there, but 
Let's track this liner. I'm looking for the torpedo wakes. There's, uh, one of them. Looks like the other two are out to the front. Ugh, are they all gonna cut in front? Looks like they are hard over to port. They have spotted the wakes. Oh, they're turning back to starboard! I think we're gonna get a hit. At least one. Yes! <laughs> oh man, almost middle of target too. Torpedo impact. Oh shit, and another one right on that tanker. Lit them both up. We've got fires on both ships. Warship. Closing. Secondary explosions. Three, Look at this. Four, she is lit up range. like a Saturday night waterfront. Just a blaze. Both ships. Tankers burning as well. Big time. Looks like we missed with the other two torpedoes, though. I think she uh, she turned away from the lead torpedoes, and it was the um, it was the last number three torpedo that struck her right in the middle of target. God, look at that. Alright, back up to the north. Parallel their course. They've taken heavy damage. So, we're reloading uh, our torpedo tubes right now as we speak. But that's going to take a few minutes. So, down scope. Just in case someone's looking for us. Look at that, the ocean liner is dead in the water. We did some serious damage with that midship's hit. Probably right to her engine rooms. She is not moving. Sitting duck for when we reload our torpedo tubes. Looks like the, the tanker maybe is still under power, but definitely not fast. Yes, sir. New course. Three, four, yes, sir. Where's our nearest escort? Oh no, the nearest contact is the merchant out in front of us. Okay, we know that. But that's good. That means that there's no escorts closer than the merchant is. So reloading tubes one through three. Those are our final three torpedoes. We don't have any reloads after that. Still burning directly in front of us as we're uh, swinging through the northwest, heading for due north. Wow, this tanker is low in the water. She's still moving, yes, but she is still okay, ablaze, yes, and she is uh, she's getting pretty low. I think she's taking on water. So these last three torpedoes we might just use to finish off these two ships, and then that's it. I mean, there's literally nothing else we can do except head home, because this patrol will be finished one way or another. So this is much nicer. This was a much nicer setup and firing uh, than, <laughs> than the last episode. We got two juicy targets. She's making sinking sounds already. She is finished. Forward decks of the tanker already submerged. Oh, and look at that. Fires just went out on both ships. Or at least the main blazes. We can 
still hear a fire on the tanker, but, uh... Did they both go out, or is that just a... Is that just a glitch? Nope! So the fires are out! Um... But I think these bitches are still sinking. Now, the question is how fast they're gonna sink. If they're gonna do it in a timely manner, or if it's gonna take hours. Tanker's now a thousand yards away, and she is going around the outside of the cruise liner, so we don't have a direct shot. Tube 1 has been reloaded. I don't want to waste any torpedoes on that liner at the moment, though. So we got to wait for her to clear the liner. Maybe we'll fire another torpedo for the killing blow when she comes around the, the bow of this other ship. You know, even if we have to go past the liner, if she's dead in the water, we can always circle back around later. I should probably mark her position on the map. Yeah, let's do that. So, she's approximately... there. She's going to drift on the tides, um, but we'll at least have a general idea of where she is. Do you hear that? We can actually hear the sounds of her sinking. We're so close that off to the port side we can hear that cruise liner filling with water. Contact. Warship. Moving away. Yeah, look at that. She's right there. And there's the tanker well clear of the other ship. So I'm going to fire. She's a little lower in the water, so let's set 20 feet on the torpedo depth. Oh, and it's not necessary. Look at this. Lifeboats are out. She is going nose down. Decks are completely awash. This tanker is sinking. No need for further action. She is done. Excellent. Funnel is under. We just waited her out. And there's the tanker down. So, we just have the cruise ship left. So let's swing around over to the right. And we'll make a wide turn to come back around to be parallel with the cruise liner to fire at least one torpedo into her and finish her off. Unless she sinks by then. We'll see. It's going to take a few minutes to come around, so... We'll see what's up. Also, let's take a look for escorts. Have they figured out that maybe there's a submarine near these other ships? Oh, two more merchantmen coming up. Well, she's got some water in her, and we heard her making the noises like she's sinking, but she's still sitting pretty high in the water. There's lifeboat. With an escort just out behind it. And we're back to that same merchant, which is coming in pretty close. I wonder if we could get a shot off on her. She's coming right at us. Though. I mean, she's right at 180. Heading almost due north. She's going to be... She might be too close to actually get a torpedo on. She might be within the arming distance, which is 140 yards for the Mark 10s, but yes, sir. we might as well at least set up a shot and try. Yes, sir. Ahead, slow. So come right by 30 degrees to try to open up that distance between us to reach that 140 yards. And let's try to ID... Alright, it's got those masts with the, uh, the solid mast. Yeah, that's it. Coastal Composite Freighter. Draft of 18 feet. 
So we'll back five feet off that for 13 feet. On torpedo one. Yes, sir. Ahead stand. Bringing the speed up, yes, I want to try to open up the distance as fast as possible. Opening tube one again. As we prepare to fire, taking a first bearing on the ship. Yeah, she's only 250 yards out. Pretty close. We'll call it 90 degrees. Well, no, we'll call it 60 because she's sort of coming towards us. But she is zigzagging pretty aggressively. Which actually is going to help us. That's going to help uh, increase the, the distance until she zigs back, of course. Escort still reporting at long range. Now she's 90 degrees to us. Just sort of estimating where the water line would be. We're at 215 yards now. Come on, zig back. Yes, sir. Runner. She's sort of in perfect position. Ahead, Coming up on uh, 245 degrees. Once she's past 270, she'll be within our firing arc for the Mark 10s. So if we can just uh, estimate what her course is going to be when she uh, zigs back, we'll try to be parallel with that. And then hopefully get a nice perpendicular uh, torpedo track into her. Estimated 8 knots, 3-3-4. Yeah, that's, I, I, I would agree with that. That's pretty close. Uh, man, it looks like she is scooting along, though. It seems like faster than eight knots, but I guess we're only doing two knots. There we go. She's passing 270, but the TDC is showing a weird torpedo track out behind us, so that's not going to work. Is she not going to turn back towards us? Come back to the left a little bit and try to uh, try to get this torpedo gyro angle back up into 90. There it goes. The gyro angle just popped into 90 degrees left. Yes, sir. But now the Your torpedo track is coming in at 45 yes, degrees sir. on her hull. That is bad news. That's how you get dud torpedoes. If they don't if they don't strike head on perpendicular, you have a real possibility of the uh, of the detonator not collapsing properly. Still doing eight knots at uh, 13 degrees. Let's see. Uh, so that's at 20. Man, look, she's just steaming away. I don't think she's going to zig back. Did they see us? Oh, I wonder if Lookout saw our periscope. Oh, they're turning the port even further. They, I think they know where we are. And they are putting their stern to us to avoid this torpedo shot. They're almost out at 500 yards, which is not far, but if they don't turn back, they don't have a good angle. And look at this guy. We've got another big ship coming up behind. I think this might yes, sir. be a more alluring target. Three. Three. Yes, sir. Let's give her one more look. Oh yeah, look at this. She is hard left over. She's got her stern right to us. Alright, I think I'm just going to abandon the coastal composite. Oh, there's the debris field from the tanker. Oh yeah, look at this. This cargo ship is like right here. Ocean liner sitting low in the water now, so she is taking on water still, just very slowly. Yeah, 
here. Where'd this other ship go? Yeah, she's still way out there. And the TDC is showing. It's almost a stern shot at this point. I think that's just going to be a waste of torpedoes to try to to try to catch her. Even though she is sort of turning back to the right, I just screw it. Screw it. We're going with this guy. What are you? You troop transport? No, that's not right, is it? Hmm. It's got four masts, but they're not shaped like that. So it must just be a regular merchantman. Oh, oh, is this it? A large modern composite? This may have been the bitch I was shooting at last time and missed. She thought she got away. Four hundred and eighty yards coming towards us still. Let's call it sixty-five, yeah, sixty degrees. She's on our back left quarter though still. Yes, sir. Ahead one third. So we'll yes, slow down sir. and we'll let her cruise past and hopefully right into perfect tube firing three, position. Ready, sir. Hey, and tube three comes ready just in time. Our last three torpedoes in the holes, ready to go. Arming distance, minimum of 140 yards with that gyro angle of plus or minus 90 degrees. So we definitely have some restrictions to work with with the Mark 10 torpedoes. But again, if we wait for her to pull out in front, I think we'll be in perfect position for a deflection shot. Doing eight knots at two degrees, uh, at least estimated two degrees, so heading due north. Maybe we'll head north yes, as well sir. and parallel Two her course. Zero. Yes, sir. Because I don't want to get too close. You can see the TDC, the angle indicators are already doing something bizarre. I think because we're too close. So we can't even program the torpedoes properly at the moment, even if we did fire. Whoa. All right, she's coming up on 270, a bearing of 270, so just off to our left. We are roughly parallel. Let's hope those uh, gyro angles pop into something useful, and we'll hit 90 degrees. There we go. On the bearing as she cruises by, let's take another uh, estimated distance here. Where's that highest mast? There it is. Touching the top of the mast to the waterline. There we go, and that gives us an angle, which is then computed into distance based on the height of the mast. Yes, sir. Ahead standard. Yes, sir. Oh god, is she peeling off to port two? Did she see us like that first ship? Ugh, come on, arrows, what are you doing? We're too close. There we go! Gyro's just popped in for a perfect perpendicular shot. Let's do a two torpedo spread. Let's fire these fish. One is away. With a two degree left and then tube two. Firing straight out. Zero degrees. Only 20 second run time. We are right there. That red hand on the stopwatch. We're watching... There we go. Estimated time of impact is past any second now. Come on. Yes! Yes! Just aft of MOT. Torpedo 2. Torpedo right in the center, just forward of it, and she's on fire. Two direct torpedo hits right into the midships. Huge damage right along the underside of the hull. Right on the keel, in fact. Oh, and she grinds to a halt. Propulsion is done. Here's the ocean liner. Still sinking, slowly but surely. Okay, scope is down. We're swinging wide right. Rudder is hard over to starboard, and we're going to swing back around to the south to line up with that final torpedo 
on the ocean liner because I want to finish her off. She seems to be sinking, but not fast enough. I just want to plug her with the last torpedo so we can uh, dive deep and get the hell out of here. Oh, I thought that was an escort coming towards us. Uh, that's what I'm looking for is escorts, escort activity. There's a couple that are sort of close, but they still don't seem to understand that there's probably a sub near all these sinking ships. Another lifeboat cruising by. That would be another thing. There'd probably be a ship coming in to pick up those lifeboats at some point. Probably not right away, because that would be the perfect uh, opportunity to to shoot somebody up. Oh, there we go. Active ra uh, sonar, not radar. And we've got a uh, subchaser coming right towards us. That's behind us at 160. Yes! There's ship number three is uh, underwater already. She's sinking. She's not going to be able to pull out of that. Alright, so we're going to go deep, drop the scope, and continue our turn and just uh, go under the lair and under these escorts. We know approximately where that liner is drifting, thanks to the mark I made, so we're going to head back towards that general area, and then we'll pop back up to line up for a shot. So until then, we just need to avoid these escorts, and the thermal layer is going to help us in doing so. Down she goes, for sure. Bow is coming up out of the water, searchlights playing over the surface of the water, and the hull. Escort fairly nearby now. Ooh, we can hear the collision alarms right above us, so somebody is awfully close. That's two confirmed kills, we've got one more to go, and that'll be three merchants out of this convoy. I hear the engines right above us, the screws of the escort passing directly above. Ooh, that's full speed. Here we go. We gotta get out from under this guy in case he's dropping depth charges. Give me ten more feet. We're already in a hard starboard turn, so we'll just keep that, and we'll let the flank speed push us out of the path of any charges coming down. Warship is now opening, bearing 077, short range. So I think she passed right over the top of us, and is now our, out to our right. No depth charges yet. Yes, sir. Ahead, I think we would have heard them by now, so let's yes, get back down to one-third. We are rigged for silent running. Since there's no torpedoes to reload, there's no point in uh, staying loud at this point. With so much of this patrol taking place at night, you may have noticed by now that our submarine uses a bluish or soft white night lighting in the conning tower, instead of the more traditional red lighting that we're all familiar with. This is because our boat predates the adoption of red lighting, and in fact possibly all subs at the start of the war were equipped with blue lights. I haven't been able to find a specific reference to when red lights were officially adopted, but it was sometime early during World War II after the Navy did extensive testing on the subject. The need for alternate lighting at all is an attempt to preserve night vision. Night vision is a chemical process where the human eye adapts to low light environments. Between 5 and 10 minutes is needed for usable night adaptation, but the entire process takes about 45 minutes to be complete. 
preserving night vision on ships became a more pronounced problem as interior lighting moved from candle and lamp light to brighter electric lights beginning in the 1880s. It's often said that pirates wore their eye patches to preserve night sight in one eye, so they could still see and fight below decks after moving out of the daylight. The theory behind this is sound, as each eye adapts independently, and in fact, the U.S. Navy experimented with eye patch use during these early days of the war. Many modern sport or commercial sailors still use them. However, historically speaking, pirates, or any other sailors in the 17th and 18th centuries, did not actually wear eye patches other than to cover disfigured eyes. Wearing an eye patch aloft in rigging would be especially dangerous because of the loss of depth perception. A sailor would be more likely to fall. It would also make it harder for lookouts to spot distant ships. As for fighting below decks, pirates almost never did that at all. It was much more economical to chop holes in the deck and drop grenades or fire pots through them to flush the crew out from below. The only historical evidence of patch-wearing pirates is due to lost eyes from disease or injury. And this was no more or less prevalent than it was with any other seamen or soldiers of the time. The modern pirate myth is the result of fiction writers centuries later. The Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars of the 1700s led to a high upswing in disabled seamen, and their peg legs and eye patches were used in political cartoons and other satire at the time. By the mid-1800s, this popular depiction of sailors was translated into the modern eye-patched pirate by fiction writers Sir Walter Scott and Charles Dickens, with many others following suit through the rest of the 19th century. However, that interesting tangent aside, the U.S. Navy in the 1940s still had a legit problem with preserving sailors' night vision. They were especially worried about subsailors, who had to look through periscopes, which were already low light, and who might have had to surface suddenly in an emergency. There were also the concerns of surface ships needing to limit their light emissions so that they wouldn't be seen. The science of the time concluded that red or orange light would allow the crew the fastest night adaptation while still being able to carry out their duties. This was accepted wisdom for 40 years until 1984, when the Naval Submarine Medical Research Laboratory out of Groton, Connecticut, published a report that low-level white light is actually more effective than red. Red light adaptation is not true dark adaptation, which is a commonly misunderstood concept. Complete lack of light is still needed for total dark adaptation. Red light is still superior to white light in making this transition, but its advantage drops rapidly as the intensity of the white light is turned down. For the same luminosity levels, that is, white light turned down to emit the same amount of energy as a red light, the difference in time needed for night adaptation are essentially the same. Low-level white provides the same medical benefits without all the downsides of red light. Even during the 1940s, sailors complained of red lighting. It is very difficult to take or read logs, or to use naval or aviation charts under red lighting. Color differences that are very easy to see under white light become much harder to differentiate, especially if those colors are red-based. Red or magenta chart markings disappear under red lights, for example. This led to the use of red-tinted goggles for lookouts when they were below. The rest of the crew could operate in normal white lighting, while the lookouts maintained red adaptation. Besides impacting watch standing duties, red light also has a negative psychological impact. Red light increases eye fatigue, making it harder to focus. Another early 80s study of submarine sonar men under red lights showed a marked difference in overall fatigue, hand tremors, pulse rates, and emotion as compared to white or blue lights. Several sonar crews noted that red lights were noticeably worse under high-stress situations. Thanks to this report and several like it, rigging for red is no longer considered useful or superior. Weather decks on surface ships still often maintain red or orange lighting at night to minimize light pollution. For example, on the Enterprise, our hangar bay had a soft orange glow after dark all the way up until at least 2006. But the U.S. Navy, and in fact navies all over the world, have since reverted back from red lighting to low-level white or even blue in control rooms and combat information centers. 
Our blue lighting here on the S38, which might initially look wrong or out of place, is actually 40 years ahead of the science of night lighting and night vision adaptation. All right, we're back down to the south here. We're coming up to periscope depth. A little bit of time compression on as we do so. We should be coming even with that stricken passenger liner. So we're gonna take a look around. No further harassment from escorts. So let's see what the situation is up on the surface. Attack scope is coming up now. Let's take a peek. Hello. There, we're just hitting 50 feet now. Oh, wow. Down she goes. Look at that. Passenger liner. She is legit sinking. That's the that's the uh, the bow deep underwater. And here comes the stern coming up out of the water. Okay, so we just waited her out too. So no need for further action. So we have one torpedo left. We ended up not having to spend it. Down she goes. That is three big ships uh, tonight. Oh, well, I guess it's actually all tonight. So we got four ships out of this um, this invasion convoy. And there's the escorts spread around to our north. A little bit to our south. And I'm just going to mark a new course. We're just going to get away from these guys and disengage. And in fact, we're going to start heading for home. We're going to cut through the uh, the patrol area just so we can get the mission accomplished on that. We need to be in the area for a certain amount of time. So we'll just... Which we should reach with no problem, even just cruising. No escorts close to us that I can see, so down scope. Yes, sir. If we're far enough away that we can make a little yes, bit of noise. Yes, so secured from silent running, we're up to standard speed. We still got 33% ish battery power left, so let's just run that down, getting away from these guys. And uh, while we're at it, let's secure from battle stations. Secure from battle stations. Let's move the guys from Watch Team 1 back up onto the main deck, along with Watch Team 2. Everyone's probably freaking exhausted at this point. The offgoing Watch Team from hours ago, uh, when they had, to, they had to stay on longer because of the battle stations, and uh, just when they went to sleep the first time, they immediately got racked out for another, well, let's see, it's 23.16 now, so another three hours, two and a half hours of, uh, of fighting. In battle stations, we've got one torpedo left That's the uh, that we're going home with, the magic torpedo, unless we happen upon a chance target, we're probably not going to be able to fire that at anything. Down we go underneath the thermal layer to mask our departure as we just move away from these enemy ships. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes. Let's take a look at our mission objectives. Patrol the Lingayan Gulf is still incomplete, but sink IGN units, we had two of them issued because we reported the convoy twice, and those are complete. And uh, here are our ships that I think is going to be the final tally for this patrol. So we had a NACA light cruiser, 51, or almost 5,200 tons. Large modern tanker of 10,000 tons. Oh, she's a big one. That's a big bitch. Large modern composite freighter, 7,100 tons. And large old passenger carrier, 9,200 tons. So we got four ships overall. A pretty impressive haul for an S-boat on her first war patrol especially considering that one of them was a warship 
and they were pretty big ships. We had that 10,000 tonner, which is nothing to sneeze at. That is three more ships than the S-38 got on her real-life first patrol. Unless you count that poor Norwegian ship. Technically, she sunk two, but I mean, one was friendly fire. That's not... that doesn't really count. So we got four real kills. We barely got depth charged, which is also in contrast to the S-38's real patrol, where she, uh, after sinking her one ship, basically got knocked around for days before finally being able to head home. Oh, and she blew up her battery. <laughs> because uh, somebody didn't vent the battery right during charging. So luckily, we avoided that as well. So we're in really good shape. And uh, we're going to follow the coast down to the south, head back to Manila, and see what the situation is on the rest of the Philippines. Probably going to get turned right around and have to go out on another patrol because the island is still under attack, as far as we know. Morning time finally comes. We're now on the 12th of December. So keep in mind, we left port on the 8th as soon as war was declared. It took less than 24 hours to reach our patrol area, and then we spent maybe a day or two there, blew off all our torpedoes, and it's only gonna take 24 hours to get back to port. So here we are, we're only a couple days after leaving, and we're returning with an empty belly and uh, four ships to our name. Here we are back in the harbor. Let's set up some sailing waypoints to bring us around and line up with the pier. This is the pier we left from. Ship spotted. Bearing. Three, two, so we'll six, drive the boat eight, right eight. in to position. We'll order some backing engines to slow down. And then we'll secure the ship. We'll throw some lines ashore and get all tied up. That's going to be it for this episode. Mission is complete. Yes, this was a very Stop. successful patrol. I am, uh, I'm real happy with the outcome here. I was a little disappointed uh, in the first episode because I thought we missed our chance, uh, some, some real opportunities. Yes, and wouldn't you know, for whatever reason, they dropped yes, right sir. back in our lap. And the second time, uh, the second episode, we were able to take complete advantage of that yes, and basically destroy the majority of yes, the heavy ships in the convoy. We've got three in one uh, engagement. So... Thank you so much for watching, and come back next time to check on the progress of the crew of the S-38 and to see how the war is faring for the U.S. Navy and the forces of the Asiatic Fleet stationed out here at Manila. We'll see you then.